Let me introduce you to Mary Kay Letourneau and Vili Falau. At first glance, you would assume that Mary and Vili were simply a happy married couple. But the truly shocking issue about this romantic relationship is they had their first sexual experience when Mary was 34 and Vili was 12. This is the true story that serves as the inspiration for Netflix's latest feature release, May-December, full of obscure symbols like butterflies and snakes, all reflecting on a tragic true story of controversy and severe mental illness. And we're going to discuss this film in three sections, the true story, the psychology, and the symbolism of May-December in this spoiler-free analysis. The true story. In 1991, 29-year-old Mary Kay Letourneau was a teacher at Sherwood Elementary in suburban Seattle. She had quite a normal relationship with other students until she met a second grader, Billy Falau, who she developed a strangely close connection with. In her words, there was respect, an insight, a spirit, an understanding between them that grew over time. Over the next several years, Letourneau kept in touch with Vili. She bought him art supplies, took him to museums, and encouraged him to develop his talent for poetry. And in 1995 and 96, when Letourneau had Vili in her sixth grade class, she experienced a lot of personal misfortune. She wasn't getting along with her husband and had a miscarriage. She began spending personal time with Vili to help cope with her issues and also began having sexual fantasies about him. And only a few days before Vili's 13th birthday, the sexual abuse began. Vili was eager to have a sexual and romantic connection with Mary, regardless of their age gap, as he claims. And Mary felt a stronger and stronger connection with Vili the more time they spent together. And in the following school year, in 1996, Mary ended up pregnant with 7th grader Vili Falau's child. And in March of 1997, Mary was arrested for a word I can't say on YouTube. And during Mary's seven years in prison, she violated her parole to reunite with Vili. And when she was finally released, Vili and Mary shortly married each other and had two loving daughters. In the film, a very similar situation has occurred. Gracie had an affair with Joe when Gracie began teaching Joe in her seventh grade class. She was 36 and he was 13. And the two of them claim they've been in love ever since, now as a married couple. Just like in the true story, Gracie and Joe's scandal was an international story in the tabloids, and they are now a nationally infamous couple where boxes of feces are sent to their porch out of disrespect and disapproval. Gracie has agreed to this film that Elizabeth is acting in so she and her story can be better understood and hopefully empathized with by the public. But under the surface of such an outrageous marriage, there's an endless list of psychological issues and mental illness triggering this entire situation, which I'm dying to move into in the following section. The Psychology According to my research, when it comes to what led to Gracie and Joe's sexual relationship and marriage, there are two major psychological issues here. Bipolar disorder for Gracie, and the long-term effects of sexual grooming for Joe. So let's start with Joe. Joe is a victim of sexual grooming and suffers from his long-term effects, just like Vili Falau. Sexual grooming is when someone builds a relationship, trust, and emotional connection with a child or a much younger person so they can sexually manipulate, exploit, and abuse them. The victim develops complicated feelings with the groomer as they get older, like loyalty, admiration, and love, as well as fear, distress, and confusion with the person. And this mental confusion leads to long-term mental health effects, anxiety and depression from deep feelings of shame and guilt, post-traumatic stress when a trigger occurs, and relationship issues from an early developed lack of trust. And it can also lead to an inability to grow up, a fear of independence and adulthood. And this is exactly what we see in Joe. He never really grew up. He acts very much like a 13-year-old, wide-eyed, naive, and innocent boy. He doesn't really parent his children, and he's almost like a teenage son to his own wife. And now, to understand Gracie's mental illness, we have to briefly return to the case of Mary Letourneau. Mary's attorney and many psychiatrists argue that Mary is a sick woman and not a criminal. She's been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, 
a mental condition they say caused her reckless behavior. As prosecutor Lisa Johnson later told the court, she avoided her treatment in prison and didn't believe she needed treatment because she doesn't believe she did anything wrong. Bipolar disorder symptoms may include an exaggerated sense of well-being and self-confidence, followed by extreme frustration and sadness for the most unnecessary reasons. Mayo Clinic specifically indicates that the disorder can also lead to extremely poor decision-making, such as specifically taking sexual risks. This can also specifically lead to poor judgment in how to speak to and treat others, which explains the harsh comments she makes about her daughters. According to WebMD, Severe bipolar disorder can make many of these symptoms long-term rather than only sporadic and momentary, specifically because of damage to the frontal lobe, which may indicate why Gracie and Mary have this sustained connection to Joe and Billy even after several years. The sad conclusion to all of this is Gracie's bipolar disorder and mental illness, combined with Joe's long-term issues from grooming, allow them to be together. Gracie has deluded herself into believing she's in love, which has now deluded Joe into believing he's in love as well. The Symbolism May December, of or designating a marriage or romantic relationship between a young person and a person who is considerably older, one partner in the winter of their life and the other in the spring of their life. The title of this film is quite a self-explanatory symbol once you learn its definition, but there are a few others I want to discuss that can certainly be a little more puzzling, such as the many visuals of butterflies and snakes. The butterflies symbolize metamorphosis, tying in with the changes and development we are expected to go through as we mature as humans, and how that human development can be stunted by traumatic experiences, specifically with Joe's life-changing childhood experience with Gracie. The development of the eggs and caterpillars Joe supervises run parallel to Joe's development and hopefully finding his own independence as an adult. The visuals of snakes represent the predators. The nature of snakes in their natural environment is often quite inconspicuous and peaceful until you realize they pack a life-threatening venomous bite or have the strength to squeeze you to death until they swallow you whole. And these contradictory traits run perfectly parallel to a female pedophile like Gracie. If you looked at Gracie or Mary Kay Letourneau, you would never expect them to commit such an obscene crime. And to tie the bow on this metaphor, what is a common prey of some snakes? You guessed it, butterflies. Just like the natural abilities of the snake and the butterfly, everyone is pretending and transforming. And what better of a human symbol to put right between Joe and Gracie, representing that exact concept of change and disguise, than Elizabeth, an actor who you, as the audience member, struggled to understand the intentions of. Is she doing this film to simply amplify the cycle of entertainment of this tragic story? Or does she really want to educate the public on who Gracie and Joe truly are? And her relentless dedication to her preparation for this performance is almost inhuman, continuously claiming it needs to feel real. Signifying how Gracie and Joe may also be relentlessly dedicating their entire lives to a performance, an act of matrimony and happiness when inside they could very well be suffering.